In this X Minute Math video, we're going to look at how to rationalise a denominator, specifically of an expression or a fraction that looks like something over the square root of probably something else. Okay. So to motivate this, I want to start off with a question. So my question is simply, which of these two expressions looks simpler. Often simplicity is in the eye of the beholder. So it is a genuinely valid question. Now I'll tell you right now, these two quantities are actually equal, okay? but you can see they're a little bit different because this left-hand quantity has a square root in the denominator and the right-hand quantity has square root 2 upstairs in the numerator. Okay. And I'll give you a hint here, which is that if we actually wanted to calculate or at least estimate what these quantities are, it would be helpful to remember that root 2 is roughly 1.4142 and so on with its infinite decimal expansion. Okay. So if we look at the left-hand quantity, if I want to figure out what that is, I have to divide by a truly hideous, never-ending real number. Okay. So that's not, not so great. But on the right-hand expression, okay, that root 2, all I have to do is multiply it by 3 in the numerator and then divide the result by 2. So that seems a lot more uh, approachable of a calculation. Okay, so often we'll think of that right-hand side as being simpler because that square root, that irrational number, is not in the denominator, it's in the numerator. Okay. So often what we're going to do is try to, what we call, rationalise the denominator. Okay, we want to take the expression where the denominator is an irrational number, and we want to rewrite it where the denominator is a nice rational number. So we can see a pretty straightforward example of how to do this, and it just leverages kind of a really silly trick, actually. Okay. So if I take the fraction 5 over the square root of 3, okay, square root of 3 is in the denominator, that's a little bit intimidating, Okay. All I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by the fraction root 3 over root 3. Okay. Now this doesn't change the value of 5 over the square root of 3 because I'm really just multiplying by 1, right? Root 3 over root 3 cancels out, simplifies to 1. Okay. But if I actually carry out this, this multiplication of fractions, what happens is I get 5 times root 3 in the numerator and I get root 3 times root 3 in the denominator. If I simplify this, I'll get 5 root 3 all over 3, right? Because root 3 times itself, by definition, gives me 3. So there you have it. I've managed to move my root 3 from my denominator upstairs to my numerator. Now, another example, just to show you what sorts of things can happen here is the following. Let's say I have 10 over root 10 and I want to rationalize that denominator. Well, we'll just apply the same, the same trick. In this case, we're gonna multiply by root 10 over root 10. I'm really just multiplying by one, so nothing's changing. So this equals 10 root 10 in the numerator, root 10, times root 10 in the denominator. So if I simplify here, I'll get 10 root 10 upstairs. I'll get plain old 10 downstairs. And now I can cancel those common factors of 10. And what I get left with is the square root of 10. So sometimes when I rationalize a denominator, I actually clear the fraction entirely. And that's okay. That can definitely happen. And it's really that simple, okay? Now, if you want one more minute 
of math to do, what I would encourage you to try is rationalizing another denominator But this time, I'm going to use some unknowns. I'm going to use some variables. Okay, see if you can apply the methods that we talked about in today's video to rationalize the denominator here and move that square root from the denominator upstairs to the numerator. If you have any questions about this idea of rationalizing denominators or if you have suggestions or a request for what to cover in our next video, please leave a comment below. And as ever, if you want to do X minutes of math, Y more times, don't forget to subscribe.